Ji Yuhang had just assumed a position of power, and during his first morning meeting, everyone arrived late. He patiently waited, but once everyone finally gathered, he simply announced, meeting adjourned. Without saying another word, Ji Yuhang left the conference room, leaving everyone bewildered and unsure of what just happened. As they were about to leave, Ji Yuhang returned and said, I will create a work group on WeChat. I will post work assignments there, so please check it regularly. Additionally, attendance must be strictly adhered to. Casual tardiness and early departures will be linked to your salary and bonuses. Everyone was intimidated by Ji Yuhang's authority and silently returned to their workstations. Only Xiao Zhao, fuming with dissatisfaction, muttered that this well-connected person was showing off his power but no one else responded as everyone kept their heads down and continued working. As night fell, Ji Yuheng and Tu Xiaoning returned home. Tu Xiaoning said, I didn't expect you to mix up our work IDs on your first day. It scared me so much that my heart almost jumped out. Ji Yuheng replied, Really? I didn't notice. She said, Don't doubt me. You need to be more careful in the future. They also established a small agreement on dividing household chores, one does them on Monday, Wednesday and Friday, and the other on Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. This arrangement not only strengthened their relationship but also created a sense of boundaries. Ji Yuheng asked, do we need boundaries at home too? Tu Xiaoning replied, of course. It helps us stay alert and maintain a high level of vigilance to keep our secrets from being discovered. Ji Yuheng agreed. That makes sense. When Tu Xiaoning winced as she stood up, Ji Yuhang immediately asked, What's wrong? She said, It's nothing. My new shoes squeezed my feet. Ji Yuhang then carefully followed instructions from Beidou to fix her new shoes, showing his tender care and affection. While Tu Xiaoning was washing dishes in the kitchen, she had to stand on tiptoe due to the height of the cabinet, which seemed quite effortful. Ji Yuhang, noticing this, quietly moved behind her and gently took the bottle from her hand. Unexpectedly, Tu Xiaoning suddenly turned around, and in the moment of surprise, their lips lightly brushed against each other. The air instantly filled with a mix of awkwardness and sweetness. They quickly parted, shared a smile, and tacitly chose to ignore the accidental kiss, returning to their tasks. The next day, Tu Xiaoning shared the little incident with her friend Ling Wei. Ling Wei, after hearing about it, asked, so what happened next? Tu Xiaoning replied, then we just went back to our own things and each went to our own rooms to sleep. Ling Wei said, you two are in a married before dating situation. Why does it seem like you're like two Puritans? Tu Xiaoning responded, aren't we trying to avoid being discovered? We need to stay highly alert, right? Ling Wei replied, you're at home, and it's night time. Who's going to find out? Do you have tofu in your head or something? Ji Yuhang sent a notice in the work group, requiring all members to attend a meeting at 1 p.m. During the meeting, he asked each member to report their set task goals. He especially challenged Zhao Fanggang to add one new private enterprise each month. Despite Zhao Fanggang's inner dissatisfaction, he had no choice but to accept it silently. For Tu Xiaoning, Ji Yuhang imposed even stricter requirements she had to complete all probation assessments within three months. This was not only a test for her but also a demonstration of his principle of treating everyone equally. Although Tu Xiaoning felt the pressure, she understood that this was an essential part of her growth. A panicked man came in looking for the loan department. Since he had no appointment and no direct contact, Ling Wei politely stopped him at the door. However, he was extremely anxious and, disregarding the situation, seized the brief moment when the door card verification was taking place to forcefully enter the office area, heading straight for the expansion department. Losing control of his emotions, he even brandished a sharp dagger, threatening everyone present. At this moment, Tu Xiaoning was rushing back from the restroom. Faced with the sudden crisis, she quickly adjusted her mindset and tried to calm the agitated man. The man, tearfully recounting his plight, explained that he was in trouble due to a loan taken out for a matchmaking service. After transferring the money to the woman introduced by the service, he lost all contact with her. Now, the bank was pursuing the loan repayment, leaving him with no way out. 
In his desperation, he pressed the knife to his neck and demanded that the bank immediately cancel his loan account. Ji Yuhang happened to witness the scene. He calmly directed Tu Xiaoning to coordinate the action. As the man was entering his facial information, Ji Yuhang decisively intervened and successfully seized the dagger from him. However, the out-of-control man still tried to retaliate, and the dagger cut Ji Yuhang's arm, instantly staining his sleeve with blood. Tu Xiaoning, frantic with worry, accompanied Ji Yuhang to the hospital. While anxiously waiting outside, she took advantage of the doctor's absence to sneak into the hospital room to check on Ji Yuhang. However, when Rao Jing and Zhao Fanggang also entered the room, Tu Xiaoning quickly hid behind Ji Yuhang, using the curtain for cover. Rao Jing and Zhao Fanggang, having seen Tu Xiaoning enter the room, began searching for her, wondering why she wasn't there. Rao Jing said, I'll give her a call and see where she is. Tu Xiaoning immediately turned off her phone. Ji Yuhang asked Zhao Fanggang to stay behind to discuss the matchmaking loan issue and assigned him the task of investigating it. Initially, Zhao Fanggang was a bit hesitant, but after Ji Yuhang reminded him that although the matchmaking loan business was previously handled by general manager Zhang, and Zhang had been dismissed, the unresolved issues could lead to severe consequences if the head office found out. Rao Jing proactively planned to address the matchmaking loan issue in hopes of making a good impression on the leadership. She took Tu Xiaoning with her as they went out. Zhao Fanggang called Rao Jing, and coincidentally, both of them ended up at the Qianliyuan Matchmaking Agency. At the entrance of Qianliyuan Matchmaking Agency, Rao Jing and Zhao Fanggang quickly discussed their action plan. A group of matchmaking service staff swarmed around them and dragged them into the agency. Meanwhile, Tu Xiaoning cleverly avoided any awkward situations that might reveal her connection with Ji Yuhang. Seizing the opportunity, she managed to take down the photos of the two people hanging on the wall, inwardly thinking to herself, that was close, that was close. After the three of them left the matchmaking agency, they had gathered all the evidence they needed, feeling satisfied with their haul. Unexpectedly, Rao Jing had a private little puppy boyfriend. After finishing her official duties, she hurriedly went to meet him to enjoy some personal time. When Tu Xiaoning returned home, she immediately mentioned the photo incident she had encountered at Qianliyuan to Ji Yuhang, feeling somewhat embarrassed. At that moment, Ji Yuhang, with his hand injury, was physically limited. Although Tu Xiaoning wanted to help, she mistakenly thought he might have ulterior motives and quickly made an excuse to leave. Later. Tu Xiaoning met up with Ling Wei for a workout. Ling Wei spoke highly of Ji Yuhang, leaving Tu Xiaoning with mixed feelings. As night fell, Tu Xiaoning ran into Ji Yuhang waiting at her doorstep. Concerned for her safety, he had been waiting for her. They walked side by side, and Tu Xiaoning reflected on the events of the day, later sharing her warm feelings of being protected on her social media. Seeing this, Ji Yuhang couldn't help but smile softly. Their relationship subtly grew closer in that moment.